going to have the opportunity to act or to react. Now, in action, there's always that evaluation of the situation and then determining your course of action, which way you're going to choose to go. God wants to be involved in that choice process. He wants you to decide with him the direction that you will go. Because you see, the scriptures teach us that a direction of a man's heart is his own, but the footsteps are ordered of the Lord. So we kind of have the freedom to choose which direction we're going to go, but God desires by his spirit to lead us in that direction because our footsteps really determine where we wind up. The direction may be one set of steps, but you may find yourself that if you're being directed by God, no matter which direction you start off in, if you're letting God direct your footsteps, he's going to take you to the place he wants you to go. So irregardless of what you think might be the direction that someone else might be headed, you might be kind of mistaking the purpose that God has in store for them because they may go in one direction to start with and wind up in another direction in the end of their journey. And that's kind of what life is all about. It's about experiencing how God is able to use men's own actions, even despite themselves, as the scripture says sometimes, that irregardless of how they think they're acting or reacting, God can use that for his glory. So our process in learning about him and discovering who God is, is to simply trust him to work out his salvation in us because he's the one who gave it to us. All we had to do was accept what he was going to do for us because we could not have done it ourselves. Anytime that you try to add to your salvation or you try to make it better or to do something to improve yourself, you're really denying the fact that God has given you grace and mercy to be forgiven. Now he is going to work on you from the inside out. What you can do is work from the outside in. And sometimes that's a matter of more acknowledging what he's doing and thanking him than it is in you actually trying to make yourself perfect. Because the biggest hypocrite in the world is the person who thinks that they've arrived when in reality inside they're a total mess. And because God can see the inside and we can only see the outside, a lot of times what we see on the outside has little to do with what's going on on the inside. So while man may look on the outward things and God looks on the heart, our choice every day is to turn our lives over to him and to walk with him in a humble way, to discover with him what he has in store for our footsteps as opposed to our directions. Because anyone can be given directions and sometimes they follow them, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they get lost, sometimes they forget them. Sometimes they just don't do it like they're supposed to do it. And all of that really is covered under what we call the law. And those were called instructions. They were those things with which God was telling the children of Israel to do. And even in doing those instructions, they kind of got lost along the way. But you see, if the direction of a man's heart is his own, but the footsteps are ordered of the Lord, then God could still turn around that direction and those instructions with which they got lost in and make it work out for grace in the long term where we would only look at the short term effect. So you see, sometimes we're so short minded or so narrow minded, we don't see the big picture that God has in store for each and every one of us. He is desiring for us to discover salvation, first of all. First and foremost, Jesus said salvation is this, that you would have a relationship with him and with the Father in heaven. That's what he said salvation is. Literally, eternal life is this, that they should know me whom you have sent and know you who is God, <laughs> literally. And so knowing God our Father and knowing Jesus is what eternal life is all about. And if you've asked the Holy Spirit to come into your life, you know, and you've been born again of that spirit, then you have a part of God in you that's teaching you and guiding you and leading you and helping you to discover 
what eternal life is. Now, when you discover this life, this eternal life that God is working out in you, then it gives you a freedom to not fear what men may do, but rather be able to trust in what God can do for you, with you, in you, and every day that you walk with Him, talk with Him, and discover and uncover what it is that He's directing you by your very footsteps. So, today, if you would take the time, you can choose to do anything you really want to do. You can go to the left, you can go to the right, you could go forward, you could go back, you could sit still, you could do a lot of things. But your footsteps, remember, your footsteps are ordered or put in place by the Lord. So, if you want a shortcut, <laughs> you could ask Him what direction He wants you to go. That might save you a lot of extra footsteps. But always recognize that God is with you. You don't have to fear what others may do. You don't have to worry about what others may experience. What you need is to just be with your Lord and your God, to discover and uncover what Jesus has for you today, and to walk with your Father in a most humble way that trusts Him with everything that comes your way. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not in thine own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him. He will direct your path.